What's good? What's popping on the base? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominique. I am a travel emergency room registered nurse. And if you are not new here, then welcome back Golden Bay. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. So as you guys can see from the title down below today, we are going to be doing a chit chat get ready with me. I asked you guys to send me some topics on Instagram. And not only are we going to hit those topics, but I'm also going to be filling you guys in on where I've been. So a life update, what's to come within the next few months, how I broke my leg and so forth and so on. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys my updated makeup routine, which is highly requested. But before we get started, I do want to go ahead and shout out today's Golden Girl sponsor. Huge shout out to Anna Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring today's video. Anna Luisa was kind enough to send me some pieces that I'm actually wearing today. So these earrings are by Anna Luisa. I love them because they're just so cute and dainty. I also have on this bracelet by Anna Luisa, as well as this really pretty ring. I love these pieces because they are all timeless and simplistic. However, they stand out and most of all I love them because you can stack them you guys know I love to stack my jewelry I love to put on a watch with maybe two or three bracelets a few rings all of Ana Luisa pieces are 100% humidity and strength tested so which means you are getting quality pieces that will last and that will not tarnish Ana Luisa does craft all of their pieces with the planning in mind the brand is carbon neutral and climate neutral certified offsetting 100% of their carbon footprint like I mentioned previously they do test all of their products against tarnishing allergies damage and breakage but if you're not totally satisfied they'll send you a replacement or reimburse you with no questions asked so if you are an og here on my channel then you know that i've partnered with anna luisa before plenty of times in the past and i love their jewelry i actually wear their jewelry that they send me if you guys watch my vlogs my sit down videos then nine times out of ten you will see me in an anna luisa piece so once again huge shout out to anna luisa for sponsoring today's video i really love my pieces I always love the pieces that you guys send over and if you haven't already make sure you go ahead and check my description box I will not only have a link down below, but I will also have a code for some money off and yeah Let's go ahead and get into today's video Hey you guys welcome back to my channel. Let's go ahead and get started I know I already filled an intro because Dominique is on top of it. So let's go ahead um, And get started. I'm gonna do my eyebrows off of camera um, just because it takes me forever and it's something honestly I can't do while I'm talking so I do need to do this <laughs> by myself although this is a chit chat get ready with me I will be telling you guys all of my products and everything like that so definitely of course pay attention to the screen check down below in my description box because I'm gonna have everything linked down below I get a lot of questions about my updated makeup routine so here you guys go. So this is the first thing that I use. I like to use the um, Precisely My Brow in the color 4 to do my brows. And then to shape them up, I like to use LA Girl Pro Concealer in the color Fawn. I have a ton of these, y'all. This is my jam. So yeah, that's all that I do. Um, fill them in and then shape them up. And then I'll be back on camera and then we'll get started. All right, you guys, as you can see, my eyebrows are done. I'm about to just go ahead and blend them out using like a small um, concealer brush. And I try to be super careful and not, of course, touch my eyebrows <laughs> because nothing is more annoying than fixing a broken eyebrow. Like literally when you've accidentally like slashed it in half and now you got to fix it. So yeah, that's it for my eyebrows. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a life update. I know I asked you guys to send me some topics um, on Instagram, but I'm going to start with a life update and then we can go ahead and get into topics and everything like that. Because a lot of you have been asking like where I've been, how I've been, how was my travel assignment, how did I break my leg. Let's get started. If you don't already know, let's get into my leg first. If you don't know already, I did fracture my leg. I broke my leg while I was on vacation in Puerto Rico. I went to Puerto Rico for one week and while I was there, your girl broke her leg. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions, of course, regarding how it got broken. Long story short, your girl fell off of an ATV. Although I broke my leg and I'm super bummed about it, I'm like extremely blessed that I didn't, you know, fall on my spine the wrong way and all of this other stuff. Like there could have been so many other things wrong. I could have, you know, hit my head and had a traumatic brain injury. I could have had a concussion all of this other stuff but I only walked out with a few scratches and a fractured leg so with that being said I have of course been going to the orthopedic let me just get into the story with that y'all I went to the ER in Puerto Rico and when I tell you 
y'all it was honestly like a third world country although puerto rico is a part of the u.s it really felt like i was in a third world hospital it was i it was just horrible i'm sorry it was horrible don't get me wrong everybody there was so sweet the nurses were so amazing to be a nurse myself and you know be on the other side of the bed literally i was the one in the bed i had to use a bedpan for the first time ever in my life because of course with my broken leg i can't get up and go to the bathroom the nurses had to assist me and using a bedpan tmi i'm sorry if that's too much information but yeah they were so sweet so it was kind of you know cool being on the other side and being a patient um and it just really made me realize again how much us nurses do but with being in that hospital y'all it was just so I don't know like it's something out of a movie when you see like a third world country hospital not like we was you know outside in tarps and stuff like that like it was a hospital but it was just I, I don't know how to explain it it obviously I don't ever want to go back to um, a hospital outside of the states but as soon as I got back home because the service took so long I got there I got x-rays first of all it took me four hours just to get x-rays okay finally got the x-rays didn't get the results so i ended up leaving because i had to catch my flight to come back home when i got home before i even got home from the airport i went straight to the er here in the states i actually got a ct honestly i thought it was my knee i thought i had like you know just twisted it maybe it was strained or you know whatever the case may be because the swelling was up to my knee and come to find out after the ct i actually broke um my tibia the top of my tibia which actually goes inside of my knee so that's why I saw so much swelling in my knee I don't know I thought like I tore my meniscus or something like that or you know like I said strain but I ended up breaking my leg um yeah your girl got on a plane with a broken leg and everything it was y'all it was just horrible it was like I don't ever want to go through it again it was ugh, it was horrible but I did have a great time in Puerto Rico girl so much that I broke my leg so yeah that's what happened to my leg for everyone that's been asking and thank you so much to everyone who's been like reaching out and you know, sending me get well um messages everyone has been so sweet and of course i've gotten some questions about what happened so i just wanted to let you guys know what happened your girl was living her best life and broke her leg so but the good news is of course i've been going to the orthopedics and i just recently had an appointment what was it on the 15th which was monday i'm supposed to be off of crutches in about three weeks so that's june the 5th and then afterwards i do have to go through physical therapy i don't know how long physical therapy is going to be but as soon as i'm clear girl i'm ready to go back to work i'm ready to enjoy the rest of my summer like i've been in the house y'all like i haven't been doing anything it's because i can't do anything and i don't want to overdo it to the point where i'm not allowing my leg to heal it's honestly been like mentally hard like i said i've been home so I'm, it's not like my normal self. I'm usually on the go at Pilates or I'm at the gym or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So for me to break my leg and have to sit still, it's honestly been very mentally hard. But like shout out to my mom and my boyfriend for, you know, keeping me like mentally afloat and just reminding me that this is only temporary and it's not a forever thing. And then, you know, again, looking at the bright side that a lot of other things could have happened to me. I could have, you know, hit my spine the wrong way. I could have hit my head the wrong way. All of that other stuff. So I'm really grateful. And then especially being an ER nurse, I've had patients who've had ATV accidents and they come in with C collars. So super grateful. Sometimes you go through like those periods where it's like, dang, why did this happen to me? You know, all of this other stuff. But of course, I'm trying to look at the bright side and just remind myself. I'm super blessed that I only came out with a fractured leg that can heal in six weeks and some you know abrasions to my arm so next up i'm about to go ahead and prime my face i like to use the elf poreless putty primer i don't know i've just never dipped into any other primers i think i did try the what is it the milk hydro grip something something i didn't like it so i just came back to my elf i don't have any problems with it it does a good job to me so that's what I use. But moving on, of course, with my leg being broken, I cannot go to work. I've been out of work now for three, two, three months because you guys know once I got back, or if you didn't know, after I finish up at Georgia with my travel assignment, 
I decided to take a month off. That is my plan to take a month off after every single assignment. So I was already on my month off when I went to Puerto Rico. So including that month off, it's already been about a month. So I've been off for about two months. So I'm looking to be out of work. And per my orthopedic, I'm going to be out of work for about three months. So I'm not expecting to go back to work until about um, maybe july-ish early july middle july no later than august um if the lord's willing if i heal but that's my main thing i want to heal you know make sure everything aligns properly and all of that good stuff making sure i'm taking care of myself before i try and throw myself back into the workforce but of course i miss being at work you guys know i just basically became a travel nurse and now i'm already out with an injury like what I already had my assignment picked, girl. I had my freaking contract signed. I was literally getting ready to leave. That was my plan. I was supposed to leave once I got back from Puerto Rico. Like, it was going to be a quick turnaround. My mom and I were going to get on the road, and we were going to head to my next state. I'm not going to tell you out of state because I'm going to see if I can still pick up the same contract once I get better. But, um, yeah, I was so excited, y'all. I had a bucket list. So, I'm going to see, of course, if I can pick up another contract there. But, of course, I had to call my um agent and just let him know like hey <laughs> i broke my leg and of course if you guys need any paperwork to prove it and technically get me out of the contract since i had already physically signed it um i told him if you need any paperwork of course i can just supply my er documents or whatever but he was like no problem only thing i'll need is just a form of course saying i can come back to work which i'll have my orthopedic or my physical therapist right clearing me to come back to work um, so yeah, I've been out of work and I have been taking classes in the meantime. I have been taking summer classes, which is another update for you guys, my bachelor's degree. So since I'm out with a broken leg and essentially I'm home not doing anything, I had already planned to finish up my bachelor courses. So just for clarification, a lot of you may be new here i do have an associate's in nursing you do not need a bachelor's degree to graduate nursing school you can find a asn program out there so i do have an associate's in nursing and i'm finishing up my bachelor's degree now i am set to graduate actually pretty soon so i did plan on taking classes anyway when i went on my next contract once i got back from puerto rico um, but i didn't plan to take four i had think i only signed up for two this semester so um, I went ahead and signed up for two extras so right now I am taking four since essentially I'm just home I can do a heavier um, workload so yeah I'm finishing that up um, so far so good classes actually started Tuesday and today is Friday your girl done already wrote like three papers since Tuesday and it is actually very disgusting I'm happy to get more classes done this semester um, more than I had you know originally planned to do because I plan to be on my next assignment but I'm able to get my classes done so while we're on the topic of school I get also a lot of questions about what's my you know plan next after I finish up my bachelor's degree I do plan on of course furthering my education and getting my master's I've actually already started looking into master programs since I am graduating um, with my bachelor's soon I want to just go ahead and get it done meaning I don't want to take a break similar to how it was with me in high school and nursing school and everything like that I don't want to take a break I want to keep going while I have that momentum because a lot of people will stop and then they get out of that school mode they get out of that grind mode and they find it a lot harder to pick back up which is of course possible but it's a lot harder so while I'm already in that mindset of opening up my planner every day and everything like that I want to keep that momentum going so I have already started looking into master programs and I'm going to make a list of top three and then I'll go ahead and start applying of course as soon as I graduate with my bachelor's degree. So while I let this sit, by the way, this is the same concealer that I use on my eyebrows to shape up my eyebrows. I use this as a base concealer because this is kind of close to my skin tone and then I'll put my highlight on top but I like to let this sit and get tacky in a sense it gets a little you know thicker and it's a lot more coverage once you let it sit so I'm gonna let this sit for probably like 30 seconds or so so next up a lot of you have been asking about my relationship and how my relationship's going how has it been you know being long distance and all of that good stuff so huge update with this y'all I'm still in a relationship same guy um but <laughs> he actually moved and it's it's a good thing 
because he got accepted into fire school as you guys know my boyfriend um wanted to become a firefighter he got accepted into a fire program that's essentially going to pay for his education the whole way through and he gets paid you know at the same time so it was an offer that he could not pass up and like i wanted him to go because yes please chase your dreams um but yeah so he moved which is you know kind of a bummer to me but at the same time it's like dominique you were travel nursing anyway but i feel like with me knowing he's not home specifically in florida because he's no longer here in florida um it was like dang you leaving me but he like you left me first because you started travel nursing and i'm like you got that one you 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 got that one so yeah my boyfriend did move to you know pursue his career in firefighting and i'm super proud of him i'm so happy for him he's actually going on i think like his fourth week i think this week is his fourth week and he's been killing it i'm so like proud of him with that being said y'all <laughs> it's just so much like i haven't talked to y'all in a minute but with that being said i had already planned to move out this year anyway especially with me travel nursing i'm making you know a good amount of money i'm making more than i was making with staff nursing um, I had already planned to move out this year. I had planned on purchasing a home. Just being full transparent with you guys. I had planned on purchasing a home. More specifically, I had planned on building a home. Like, girl, I was like, yes. However, I thought to myself, if I were to build a home right now, I don't know where I would build it. I don't know if I want to stay in Florida. I don't know if I want to move up north. So, with that being said, I just thought to myself, Dominique, slow down. Okay, you do not have to have all of your life answers right now. Okay, it's okay if you don't know where you want to live at for the rest of your life. Um, so I did decide on getting an apartment. And honestly, I'm having the same problem now, even with the apartment. It's like, where do you want to get your apartment? Okay, it's like, tell me, where do you want to live? But you guys know with an apartment, it's a lot easier, you know, to hop around essentially because you are only on a one year lease. So a little insight into the future. I do plan on getting an apartment this year. And of course, you guys are going to come along with me on that journey. I am finally moving out, girl, finally. But where are we moving? I don't know. <laughs> so don't ask me because I don't know. Um, I have been between two cities. I'm not going to tell you guys the cities just yet. But I have been between two cities and one is closer to my boyfriend, which uh, and before y'all even start, I was already planning on moving there. But now it just gives me even more reason to move there, if that makes sense. That way, on my off months, I am closer to my boyfriend and I don't have to worry about flying out to see him. So, yeah, before y'all come in my comment talking to me, um, I had already planned on moving to the city. And when he got the job offer, I was like, wow, OK, I can move here. I'll have my boyfriend, you know. I had already planned on moving here anyway but one city is still in florida and the main reason why i'm like back and forth is because girl there's no place like florida i'm sorry unless it's like california it's not gonna be warm you're not gonna have palm trees you're not gonna have a beach 10 15 minutes away you're just not okay it's not like come on out people come here to vacation and i live here so it's very very hard to get out of florida especially because i'm not from here i'm from baltimore maryland so i love it here i didn't plan on staying in west palm beach specifically but i did plan on staying here in florida so i am in between and like i said you guys will be coming along with me on that journey to pick an apartment pick what city i want to live in but i am in between cities right now on where i want to move but that is definitely something you guys can expect in the upcoming months i'm really excited to get my own place y'all um, but yeah, I was initially planning on freaking building a house. Like I was on some big girl stuff and I still am, don't get me wrong. But I feel like once I get a little, you know, down the line some more, I'll have more insight on where I want to plant my seed, if that makes sense. Because when you build a house, you have to plan on living there because you have to come to that lot to see how the construction workers are doing. Like it's not, it's not a you know buy a house it's a longer freaking journey to build a house than it is to just simply buy a house that's already made because you have to wait for it to be built so that's what i'm saying i don't know where i want to be in the next two three years i don't know where i want to go so i don't think me building a home right now is the best best decision so 
yeah but it's good to know that your girl can do it okay I, <laughs> your girl can do it but yeah i'm so happy for him you guys he has been you know wanting to go to fire school but he found a way to go and get it paid for you know i'm just so happy for him and that's why when he got accepted and he told me i was like boy you <laughs> go and you know everyone has a dream and i never want to be that type of girlfriend like you're leaving me and all this other stuff although i was like you know sad and stuff we um did like a little surprise um dinner for him before he left his mom came me his sister his brother flew in his friend it was really really nice to you know just say our last goodbye but girl as soon as my leg is healed and i get the clear from my orthopedic i am going to see my man my man my man my man i'm going to go see my man because i miss him i have not seen him now probably going on one month and i don't like that I was going to be travel nursing anyway, but just knowing he wasn't here in Florida was like, dang, you leaving me. But like I said, he said I did it first, so you got that one. So continuing on with my life update, I actually just got this news like two or three days ago, and I posted it on my story yesterday, and everybody was like, girl, please share. Because I told, <laughs> sorry, I had to go ahead and do my contour. But I told everyone I had some really, really exciting news for y'all. And everybody had responded back to my story like, girl, please share what is going on, Dom. Like, hello. And y'all. So this is actually what I posted on my story. If you know, then you know, because you follow me on Instagram. By the way, follow me on Instagram. Because, of course, I post more there than I do here. But I posted that on Instagram. And like I said, everybody was like, girl, what? And now that I'm looking back, I think a lot of you think that I've already started my master's program or like I've already applied to my master's program because it says program begins in or starts in like 365 days. So I can see I, I already like started thinking I was like, dang, they probably think like I got into a master's program. But we are just not yet, y'all. We got to got to get the we got to secure the bachelor's first, okay? Hold on, let me put my eyes back on my leg. So like I said, a lot of you probably thought that I had already, you know, um applied and got into a master's program, but it's not that. I actually, you guys, I'm so excited. I'm so 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 excited because it's just something that I you know, I didn't even think about. It's kind of like an opportunity that fell into my lap and I was like, "Wow." why the fuck not okay so i got this email from my school um it was you know to everybody that is a current or a former student at my school and it is a study abroad program if you don't know what a study abroad program is it's basically when your school um takes you or you go overseas to you know do academic work so when i got this email i had read it and i was like you know what let me apply why not why not <laughs> and with my broken leg girl i'm just reading it and i'm like you know what let me see if i can actually do this like i would be interested let me see so i open up the application it was like a 14 freaking page like you know application telling you about what the program is um requirements all of this good stuff what the itinerary is so they ask you for your gpa they ask you you know if you're a current or former student what do you have a degree in you know and then came an essay like i wasn't expecting the essay part it was asking for like 250 words you guys know you can knock a 250 word essay out like that like it was it really wasn't that bad so you know i was like I would like to study abroad because I feel like it would help me in my career, you know, in my nursing profession. It would allow me to experience different cultures, you know, submerge myself into different cultures, which would then better influence my career. So, and, you know, I submitted the application. Y'all tell me why two days later I got like a congratulations, you have been accepted. I was like, ah! shut up. I'm going to Switzerland, Germany, and Italy with my school for a study abroad program and I am so freaking hype. I'm honestly very freaking mad that it is a year away. Sorry you guys, I had to go ahead and start blending out my concealer because like I said, when I do these chit chat get ready with me's, I like get so into talking that I just totally forget I'm here to do my makeup too. So I had to go ahead and blend out my concealer before we have some lines. Um, so yeah, 
back to study abroad so with this study abroad program I'm not going over there for a long period of time it is actually 10 days and like I said when I was filling out the application I was like what if I get kidnapped you know like what if you know just so many things that I'm just thinking about going overseas with essentially no one that I know I don't know anyone else who's going I've like asked my nursing group chat did you guys get this email did you guys apply no one else applied so it's just me and like I said I'm just like what if this happens what if that happens and then the other part of me was like and what if it doesn't what if you like really enjoy yourself what if you meet some really really cool people on this trip and then that is what you know made me apply so the main thing that I was worried about was sleeping arrangements, especially with me not knowing anyone. But you know, once I was actually filling out the application, it said that anyone and everyone is able, you know, to get a single room. Because essentially what they were going to do was if you were, I think like under 29, then you were going to go in either a double or a triple room with other people of the same gender as you. And then if you were 30 and above, then it would be a double room. But I don't play about where I sleep at. So, um. I was like you know what if I'm gonna do this I do want to have my own private room don't get me wrong I want to get the full experience but I also want to be comfortable so I went ahead and like paid an extra $800 just to have my own room now I know a lot of you are like well what's the point of going with your school when you can just go with other people the other reason why I really wanted to do this is because every time it comes to you know doing a trip with a group of people oh I can't get off right now or you know it's everyone doesn't have the same schedule as you you know like your friends or like even my boyfriend especially now with him in this program um you know he may not be able to be off when I'm off so I was like you know what let me just do it and I feel like this is when you make the best of friends when you go off to college when you do these out of the norm things I feel like that's when you have the best experiences of your life so like I said I was just like you know what why not and like I said, when I submitted the application, I didn't really think anything of it. Not that I didn't think I was going to get accepted, but I don't know. I just wasn't. It was just like a spur of the moment thing. So to get an acceptance, I was like, oh, okay. And the main thing with study abroad programs is that you can get these paid for. Okay. On the application, it said that there are scholarships that open up to help you pay for this experience which of course I'm gonna fill out the scholarships and of course it helps that I have a good GPA I'm in nursing because those are all things of course that make my application look good so um, I'm not able to fill out the form right now because the trip isn't until um, next year 2024 so they said that scholarship applications do open up the same year that the trip is scheduled for so of course I won't be able to fill out any um, scholarships until next year but I'm like so excited y'all I've of course always wanted to go to Italy I've always wanted to you know just travel the world so for me to be doing this with some people I don't even know I'm just so excited and then of course I went on TikTok and I was like looking at people that do study abroad with their schools and they're just like it was the best thing that they've ever done they've met so many people now of course some people actually stay over in these countries but we'll be there for 10 days and I was looking at the IT Itinerary. we're gonna be going on walking tours we're gonna do like the little um the boat that goes down to Italy freaking water like the famous like pictures I'm just so excited I'm so excited and then I think they've even you know scheduled some time for us to go out and do things that we may want to do I think I did read one slot that was like um venture the town on your own or something like that so i'm really hoping that i do make a friend because of course i don't want to go and venture another country by myself but if i have another you know female friend that i feel comfortable with and maybe we can you know go and do something and you know find some like shopping areas girl i want to shop it's so funny because i've already picked out my outfit for this trip that's like a year away but no seriously i've picked out some things that i'm like okay this is what I want to look like per se because of course I want to look a certain type of way because I'm not going with my family and I'm not going with my friends but I still want to look cute and I want to look like touristy so like I've already started my Pinterest board y'all know I love me some Pinterest yeah I'm just really freaking excited so that's what I posted on my story and that's why it says your program starts in um 
like 300 something days and it's because it is a travel abroad program so i'm i'm just so excited a part of me is nervous i haven't even told my mom i told my boyfriend i don't think i told him that i signed up for it yet i think i told him about it like i just you know ran it across him but i didn't actually say like hey babe yeah i've already got my seat like <laughs> the program covers airfare hotel food so like everything is included in that one price and like i said you can always get a scholarship to pay for it i've heard that it's been super easy to find scholarships to pay for your um study abroad programs and it's crazy because i've actually gotten an email um like that last year and like i again i just looked over it i was like study abroad like what and this year i actually filled it out and i got accepted so it's super crazy i'm really excited though to just you know do things i wouldn't normally do because yeah don't spend another year doing the same shit this brings me to another topic still on the traveling topic so i've come across you know these companies that would allow someone to host a trip and you guys can come along with them so would you guys be interested in that this is something else that i brought up to my boyfriend like on a whim and was like do you think people would like actually want to travel with me and he was like yeah are you crazy my boyfriend's like my biggest like hype man so i'm looking at him like no they wouldn't but i'm like really thinking Thinking, like would you guys be interested in doing a trip with me so first of all let me know down below and if so if you guys are serious I will go ahead and get like the link and it's a whole process where we pick the destination we pick how much we want to spend you kind of tell me what activities you guys want to do and then we vote on a destination whatever destination wins that's where we go and of course you guys will pay for it you can do payment plans all of that good stuff we'll have a set date um and you fly out you guys meet me there at the destination and we turn up is that something you guys would be interested in so yeah let me know because i'll definitely start you know working with the company to get myself verified get a link and then like get us rolling and you can plan the trips like as far as a year out that way you guys can request off you guys can save up money like i said they do have a payment plan because girl i'm gonna do the payment plan too okay um but yeah if it's something that you guys are like really really um interested in and you're serious about it girl we can go to bali and if it's a hit it's something that i can do every single year and it's you know it can kind of be like a tradition i would love to do it because i love to travel and I don't know if you guys would love to travel with me. We could turn up, girl. We can get some drinks. Or boy, would y'all let me know. I I don't know. But yeah, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Um, that would be like super freaking fun. And I see other people doing it, but I just never think to myself that I would have people that would be really interested in going and you know like actually meeting me in person and we can do it in another country you can bring of course whoever you want to bring and then we have set activities like basically you get a whole itinerary and it's all something that you participate in in voting for so let me know if so we can honestly i can get this link to y'all by the end of this month and we can like get started on the trip for next year that would be super freaking cool like for real all right so i need to go ahead and contour my nose i get so off track when i do chit chat get ready with me because like i get so into talking that i just like totally forget my whole routine <laughs> and i have to like regroup myself so yeah like i said i did come from georgia and a lot of you have been waiting for me to tell you guys about my georgia contract which i plan on doing a separate video i have not forgotten but a little bit about it it was a great experience so i did have my first travel contract as you guys know in georgia i actually went to calhoun georgia i never told you guys what city i was in i do plan on telling you guys the city that i worked in once i'm already gone of course for safety reasons so i was in calhoun georgia which is about an hour hour out from Atlanta it's a small little city um, about 30 to 45 minutes from the Tennessee state line I loved it you guys my experience at the hospital was great I feel like it was a great first contract and that was something that my agent said he felt like that contract would be great for me because it was an EMR um, transition contract meaning they were going from one charting system to the next as you guys know they were going from Cerner to Epic so I got to learn Epic with him which put another skill under my belt so now I can go to you know hospitals that use Epic because now I know how to use Epic and Cerner so he said that would be 
a great contract for me for my first one and he was not lying so that and plus the people they were all so welcoming you guys everyone was so welcoming there i really made a lot of like work besties and i wasn't expecting me to do that in eight weeks so my contract was originally 10 weeks but with the company doing as good as they did with the transition they actually ended up cutting all travel nurses not just myself two weeks early so like i said i was supposed to be there for 10 weeks but i was only there for eight it wasn't really a big deal for me to go home two weeks early i got the bulk of my money so we good i wasn't expecting for me to make work besties in eight weeks like i would literally get to work and just like love all of my co-workers i had a problem with absolutely no one from the charge nurses to the lpns this was my first time actually working with lpn so i really enjoyed how i got to you know experience different things working with lpns i got a lot more hands-on experience with children you know with pregnant mothers so it was really nice to get some different you know experiences under my belt because where i came from which is you know my hospital here in south florida here in south florida we have a lot of geriatric bariatric patients because everyone comes here to retire so I see a lot of older people down in South Florida so for me to you know go to Georgia I got a different array of people I got a lot more teens a lot more kids like I said a lot more pregnant women also because I was at an OB hospital so I was at a delivery hospital versus the hospital I was at here at home it was a trauma hospital so we didn't deliver babies so it was really cute to hear like the little baby sound go off across the whole hospital when a baby's born I remember Remember the first time I heard that I was like what is that and everybody looked at me like girl a baby was just born I was like that's what that is that is so cute but little things like that I wasn't exposed to that I wasn't exposed to doing fetal heart rates you know with a baby monitor because we just didn't get pregnant patients at my hospital um so I really enjoyed my experience there it was a great 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 first contract and it was only eight weeks which I really feel like got my feet wet versus a normal 13 week contract Contract because normally contracts are 13 weeks um, so I feel like it really got me you know in the groove of traveling and what to pack and what I need and all of that good stuff which I'm actually gonna be making a video for you guys like my packing list for travel nursing I'm gonna have some more travel nursing videos for you guys do not worry I got some on the way like I said I got a broken leg girl so y'all got a lot of videos coming okay but yeah i cannot wait to you know get better and continue my travel nurse journey because like i said this was only going to be my second contract so there's a lot of things out there that i have not seen yet i haven't experienced yet you know so i'm just really excited to get back to what is this powder <laughs> i'm just excited to get back you know to my life because like i said when i broke my leg it was really hard to transition into um just everything coming to a halt essentially like I can't work I can't do this I can't do that I can barely go to the bathroom by myself I can barely make food without spilling it it was just like it was it, it's a huge transition you know so like I said huge shout out to my mom and my boyfriend for like keeping me mentally afloat and just reminding me that this is only temporary because girl it was hard it was hard when I first broke my leg like seriously and I still have some hard days now like last night I didn't go to bed until three o'clock in the morning it's because my leg hurt so bad and it's just like oh it's just it's just crazy so before we move on to the topics that you guys sent me that's all for my life update um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray my face this is my morphe I have a bunch of setting sprays so I have a mini morphe that I usually like to travel with I have the same one in a bigger version um, I also picked up this setting spray while I was in Puerto Rico because everyone has been talking about it on TikTok. <laughs> and then I also have my um, Charlotte Tilbury one but I really really like my Morphe one so yeah we're gonna just go ahead and use my Morphe I really need to stop using my miniature one because like I said this is the one that I travel with and I need to use my big one while I'm at home because then I'm gonna run out my small one and then have to go get some more so while we let that dry let's go ahead and hit one of y'all topics someone asked me advice for new grad nurses I think I actually have a video on this so definitely go ahead and check it out but some really quick advice is to definitely go easy on yourself like I actually got a comment about this um I think like two days ago this young lady was saying like how she just felt slow and she wanted to quit as a new grad nurse and I was telling her like girl do not quit you have to give yourself grace I remember when I first started nursing just passing meds especially in an ER 
where everything is just like fast paced. It was so hard and to just see these other nurses breezing by me. It was so frustrating because it was just like, why can't I move that fast? Why can't I know this? And other examples include like picking up on little signs. You get mad at yourself like, well, why didn't I figure that out? Like, how come I didn't know that? And it's because you are new. So give yourself grace. That is my biggest, biggest piece of advice because I went through it too. Even now, I'm not 15 years into the game. I've only been a nurse for a year and a half now. So I still give myself grace. Have I gotten faster? with med passing of course do I pick up on things I probably would have never picked up on when I walk in a room of course and it's because it came with time you have to give yourself time and also you have to go into work every day as if it is a learning experience that's the only way you're going to retain knowledge so just like how you used to go to clinicals with a notebook you need to go to work with a notebook when you come across a diagnosis that you've never heard before or you don't get that often or a new med write it down that way when you come across it again you'll be like oh let me go look at my book I think I remember writing that down. I actually do it in my phone because I'm always going to have my phone. But I write down procedures for certain things. Like, okay, if someone's troponin is this high, we need to do a Q3. Because it's little notes that's going to help you. And then it's something that you can pass on to someone else. Let's say it's time for you to precept someone. Those are notes you can give to them. And you can be that person to them that will help them get adjusted. But that's the main thing. It's a huge adjustment um, coming out of nursing school into the real world. And that's one thing that sorry that's one thing that everyone says is nursing school doesn't teach you how to be a nurse and that's so true nursing school teaches you how to pass NCLEX which is great but the actual time management as a nurse they don't teach you actual med passing yes they teach you how to you know do equations you may practice a little bit in clinical but doing it by yourself they don't teach you. They don't teach you how to deal with patients. So it's a new culture essentially. So just like how you gave yourself grace in nursing school, you need to give yourself grace in the real world. And it's not gonna come second nature. And you'll see as the months go on, I remember hitting my six month mark and I'm like, wow, I remember I used to you know, do this and now look at me. And then I hit a year and I'm like, now look at me, you know, so you'll see yourself progress as you go on, but you're not going to do that if you don't give yourself grace. So that's my biggest piece of advice to all of my new guy nurses, even myself. Like I said, I still give myself grace to this day, especially being a travel nurse. I'm going to different hospitals with different policies, different procedures. They do things differently. If I don't get it right the first time, I give myself grace. It is what it is. It is what it is. So the next question that someone sent me is, so do you think nine months is good enough to travel nurse or should I wait? Now, this is going to be up to you. I'm not going to tell you, yes, definitely travel nurse at a year. Yes, definitely travel nurse at 10 months. Yes, definitely travel nurse at eight months. You guys know that I started travel nursing around, I think, my... 10 month mark there's two big things i want you guys to consider before you consider travel nursing okay the first one is something that i said in the previous question are you taking that notebook to work are you really dissecting each patient that you get are you writing down each procedure what that hospital protocol is that way you have an idea of what to expect when a similar patient comes in two are you at a high volume hospital and this is huge because when i went to georgia and i was at my georgia hospital the hospital was a lot smaller like I said it was an OB hospital it wasn't a level one trauma center it wasn't a teaching hospital it wasn't all of these things so it was a hospital that I could handle why because I was exposed to a lot worse now what if it was the other way around and I started out at a slower hospital an OB hospital and my first contract is at a level one hospital it would be a little harder so those are two things that I really want you guys to consider when it comes to travel nursing. I think that's why I felt so comfortable to travel nurse when I was at 10 months because the hospital that I started at was a level one. I got exposed to a lot of different things. And while I was at my hospital, I took full advantage. I went to the cold blue courses. I went to the crash cart courses. I went to all of these courses that way I can get some extra experience that way when it came time for me to travel nurse and I felt comfortable to travel nurse then I did but also I want to say this I don't feel like anyone is ever going to feel comfortable to travel nurse even when I started I was confident in myself but of course there was this lingering thought that I've only been a nurse for 10 months and I just thought to myself 
everything is going to be a learning experience no one is going to tell you that you are ready to travel except for yourself so i don't want you to wait on someone and be like you're ready to travel nurse because no one's going to do that you have to do that to yourself but like i said those are a few things i want you to consider before you do go are you at a high level hospital so with that being said if you are coming out of nursing school and you see this video try to get yourself into a big hospital a bigger acute hospital that way you are exposed straight out the gate and you essentially get trained in the jungle that way when you go anywhere else it's cake because that's something that a lot of my co-workers told me when I was at my hospital here in Florida a lot of people was like girl if you can work here you can work anywhere and the travel nurses are telling me this that's how you know I had 10 13 patients at my hospital here in Florida when I went to Georgia my patient my nurse patient ratio was one to four in the ER the highest I've ever had was five and one of them was something easy like a quick UTI give them some antibiotics give them a prescription to go home with maybe do a CT scan of you know the kidneys real quick confirm it's not a stone they're out so if you can get experience at a high acuity hospital straight out the gate definitely do it because I feel like that's going to give you the confidence to travel and I feel like that's really where my confidence came from to travel the hospital that I came from it was like if I can handle 10 13 patients and other travelers are telling me that this is not the norm then I think I'll be okay and then also like I said I just went out on a limb I was like you know what I'm tired of my day-to-day -day at this hospital I'm ready to travel with her. so I just went out and I did it and like I said there's no one that's going to tell you that you are ready to travel nurse no one's gonna do it and even the co-workers that told me if you can do this you can survive anywhere else they didn't tell me you're ready to travel nurse no one did that but me so the next topic that I got well this was more so of a comment she said I hate bedside so girl you are not the only person that is feeling this okay there are a lot of people who prefer not to be at bedside and prefer to do remote work who prefer to be you know in another place while still doing nursing even myself if you guys keep up with my videos then you know in my six month job update my um telling you guys that I quit my ER job here and I started travel nursing I even told you guys I do not plan on doing bedside forever I just don't feel like it's something that I can mentally or physically do although I am travel nursing I am of course making more money than I was as a staff bedside nurse it is still not worth it to be doing for 10 15 plus years it's just something that i don't plan on doing and that is why i am furthering my career that way i can get out of bedside nursing but first of all do i even love bedside nursing i love what i do as an er nurse do not get me wrong but like i said is this something that i can see myself doing when i turn 30 no because like i said especially being an er nurse it's physically demanding it can be mentally demanding does it come with a lot of benefits yes but do the pros outweigh the cons no but it's definitely something um that you can get out of bedside nursing is not something that you have to do once you come out of nursing school you can get into dermatology you can get into cosmetic nursing there are a lot of avenues that you can go so if you are really really wanting to get out girl definitely look at some other avenues because don't ever feel you're stuck and that's the number one reason why I love nursing is because there's so many things that you can do with a nursing degree you do not have to stay somewhere you do not want to be especially with the high demand for nurses today you can quit somewhere in the morning and get hired somewhere else in the afternoon like seriously it's not that hard nowadays for nurses to find a new job so that's my biggest piece of advice if you do not like where you work girl go do not feel stuck please do not feel stuck life is too short all right life is way too short to be fucking unhappy excuse my language but seriously like I said with my broken leg like it has changed my perspective on a lot of things because I could have walked out with a traumatic brain injury I could have walked out with spine injury life is just so short and things can happen in a drop of a dime like that so do what your heart desires if you want to quit girl call them right now and quit so the next question that I got is how do you balance traveling like my assignments and school so the main thing that I do is I never do more than like two classes so like I said when I had got back from Puerto Rico I was supposed to go to my next 
assignment and I was already signed up for two classes so I never try to overdo it and that is honestly something I'm still working on today I really feel like I am superwoman and that I have to get everything done right now and that's something that I'm working on within myself is that I am not on an invisible clock Dominique it is okay to slow down so that's my biggest piece of advice not only to you but myself um just slow down like it's okay to only take two classes this semester you're doing it right you're getting classes done you didn't take none you're, you're taking two you're even taking one one is better than none right so that's the main thing and of course most of all time management i don't sit on tiktok for three four hours a day i don't scroll on instagram for three four hours a day i keep my priorities in check unfortunately sometimes youtube may not be my biggest priority because i have to go to work and then once i get off of work i have to read a chapter so i may not be able to record a video and unfortunately that's just what it is i do have priorities so um that's my biggest piece of advice is to um, cut out things that really aren't important to you and keep those that are at the forefront and you will make time okay you make time for things that you really want to get done so the next question that I got is 1 to 10 how hard is nursing school and any tips okay I'm not even gonna hold you nursing school was hard it was challenging for sure I give it a 10 mentally it is challenging I'm not gonna lie to you you guys know I always keep it a stack with y'all it is hard but anything that is good in life anything that is positive anything that is honest in life is going to cost you okay meaning you're not out here robbing people it's easier to rob someone than it is to go to school and make an honest living right so anything that is good for you in your life it's going to be hard so for sure nursing school was definitely hard it was challenging but was it worth it absolutely can it be done that's the main thing yes it's gonna be hard but someone before you graduated nursing school so why can't you you can do it so with that being said by the way i just lined my eyes really quick um so with that being said just because something's hard do not get discouraged by it like i said the best things in life are going to be hard they're going to be challenging but someone else did it so why can't you do it too and the second part of her question was any tips basically the same things that i said for you know managing school um and my travel assignments make it a priority you guys that's how you balance things you have priorities that's the number one way to find balance in life is to have your priorities there's always going to be something at the top you're going to put nursing school at the top okay because it's something that you have to get done right now to have a better life and everything else is going to be below that now of course i'm not factoring in you know god family because essentially those do come before nursing school what this means is if you cannot go out with your friends tonight because you have an assignment that's what i mean by your priority you have to go ahead and set your priorities if you do not have a list of priorities I feel like that's really why you can't balance things because you don't really know what's more important than what. So I'm about to go ahead and put on my lashes. I got a few questions about these lashes in my Georgia vlog. Um, I mentioned to you guys that these lashes are so freaking good. They look exactly like eyelash extensions. Um, but I got questions on which style that I get because there are different styles that are listed. So I will have it listed in the description box down below. Both the link and then I'll put in parentheses which style these are that I use. So the next topic that I got, this one's a little juicy. This one's off subject. She said, what to do if you have feelings for your best friend who is in a toxic relationship? And I remember when she sent this to me, I asked her to elaborate a little more because I was interested and I told her I was definitely going to do this. Girl, I did not forget. Um. Um, so I'll put the screenshots up on the screen. Um, I actually need to confirm with her that it's okay for me to screenshot it and put it up. Of course, I'm going to blur out her name. I'm going to do all of that good stuff. But just so you guys can have the details. So in a nutshell, this young lady sent over that she has a best friend who is basically in a toxic relationship. And she feels as though um, his girlfriend is stringing him along. And my friend here said that she can treat him better. Okay, so she's asking for any advice. My advice, first of all, do you have any relationship to her i know that's your best friend i know he's your best friend but do you have any relationship to her because i feel like if you do then it might be a little sticky because 
you know, it, it just gets a little sticky because it's like you're my home girl too and you're trying to take my man. So you know, you, you get what I'm saying? It can get a little sticky there. If you do not have any relationship to her, I say shoot your shot. That's just me. Y'all know I'm on this whole new journey of not doing the same shit as last year. That's my motto right now. Don't do the same thing because life is too short, okay? Shoot your shot, girl. If you do not have any relationship to her um, and you like this guy and you have been friends with him, shoot your shot. Now, keep in mind, shooting your shot can ultimately alter your relationship with him meaning if it does not go well or if you guys do choose to you know become something more than friends and it doesn't work out you could potentially lose your friend too so just definitely weigh it see if you are you know willing to possibly lose your friend and if so again shoot your shot why not what's the worst that can happen he says no i really want to you know work things out with her or you know whatever the case may be but i feel like god forbid knock on wood <laughs> if something were to happen to you again i'm on this whole like i'm like woken up right now if something were to happen to you and you were not able to really get how you feel off of your chest i feel like you will regret it so why regret not telling someone something i feel like that goes for telling someone that you love them if you love someone, freaking tell them because if something was to happen to you or them tomorrow, you will regret it. So why not just tell him how you feel? What's the worst that can happen? Like I said, he says, no, I really want to work things out with her. Or what's the best that could happen? You guys actually have a great freaking relationship and y'all run off into the sunset and get married and have twins. Now, another thing that she mentioned is she doesn't want to be a rebound. And I can see what you mean by that. Meaning like he's just trying to get his ex-girlfriend off of his mind by messing with you. So what you can do is what I would probably do is I would tell him again your feelings. Um, but also let him know that you don't want to be a rebound. Basically, my main thing is be honest with him. Tell him how you feel. Also tell him you do not want to be a rebound. Meaning if he needs time to get himself together, you will give him time. But you just basically want to put it out on the floor that you are interested in him. Um, because what if he feels the same way and he is also scared that you know you may reject him because i feel like at the end of the day that's what humans are most afraid of we're afraid of rejection um but i feel like i've reached a certain point even in my relationship right now um just like telling my boyfriend my feelings i wasn't used to that because as a human we are afraid of rejection um but i've gotten past that i'm gonna tell you how i feel if something upset me i'm gonna tell you how i feel if i'm sad about something i'm gonna tell you how it made me feel why it made me feel that way and if you don't respect it you don't feel the same way it is what it is i got it off my chest i feel better about it you know so just tell him that's my main thing and like i said the same thing that you text me basically put it in first person girl and send it to him just or meet him in person and just tell him how you feel and most of all tell him you do not want to be a rebound like i really want to give this a shot with you um i have feelings for you and yeah girl put it on him okay so the next question that i got is where are you in life right now are you happy sad still grinding for a better future etc so kind of like i told you guys um earlier in the video with my life update i kind of had a life awakening moment when i broke my leg i am just trying to enjoy life i'm trying to do different things i'm trying to do things that i'm afraid to do because i think i was really awoken to the fact that you only live once and shit can change for you in a matter of a second so i am yes like grinding for a better life um however i am trying to live more in the moment i'm trying to do things that i'm really afraid to do i'm trying to do things that i am second guessing myself on if that makes sense so like for instance me moving to the city that's closer to my boyfriend typically i would be like oh i really don't want to do that you know a lot of people move for relationships sometimes it may not work out and like i said in the last question what if it does fucking work out okay and i will regret me not actually taking that leap so that's where i am right now i'm just so excited to heal because i feel like i'm gonna be a different person once i get back up on my feet literally i'm gonna be totally different i'm gonna do a lot of things that i'm afraid to do because me like being in the house as much as i am right now it really made me appreciate um you know things that i really took for granted things like driving um and everything like that so i'm really just trying to appreciate life and realize that um 
I'm 23, no kids. Girl, okay, I'm it's it, it's it's time. It's it's time. Just just wait. I got two more weeks and my leg is healed and I go to physical therapy and girl girl I just feel like my outlook on life has really changed a lot of things have you know just changed in my mind since my leg was broken like things like marriage and you know kids I know a lot of you have asked me did I want kids and I feel like the order that I get and plus the whole situation with my leg my my perspective on a lot of things have changed so the next question that I got is, do you feel like having a following changed you? Um, and I was saying no. And the reason why I say that is because I still get excited when people like, I would say recognize me in public or people get excited because I respond back to their DM. So it's kind of like a... I think like an awakening to me again that people view me one way and to me I'm just a normal person when people get excited because I DM them back it's just like girl I am a regular person to me I'm a regular person to me I just turn on the camera and I talk I edit the video and then I upload it I don't think I have wrapped my brain around having 50,000 people who subscribe to my channel. Like for instance, when I did break my leg, a lot of people reached out to me. And again, I just don't think it's something that I can grasp. I don't think it's something that I have fully wrapped my head around yet. That I have so many people out here that y'all y'all are going to make me emotional. But there are so many people out here that care about me who has never even met me, you know, like in person. But they feel like they know me through a camera. And y'all gonna make me cry. But, um, yeah, so I definitely don't feel like having a following change me. A lot of people that meet me in person feel like they have known me forever. Because I, like, I'm gonna act like myself. I act the same way that I act on camera. For instance, I had met another YouTuber, Bria, while I was on my travel assignment in Georgia. We met up in Atlanta and we grabbed lunch. And I remember we went out to dinner and then we left dinner, found like, you know, a bar that we can get some drinks. We chilled out and I was like, oh girl, I gotta go. Like I valeted my car. I had drove and I valeted my car the night. Oh, I should have Ubered. But um, I remember we were in Uber on the way back and she was like, Dom, I feel like I've known you forever. Like we just clicked. And I feel like that's what a lot of people say when they meet me. Um, that they never expected me to act like a certain way they expected me to be a certain way because i have this or because you know like i don't know but um yeah no i don't feel like having a following has changed me again i don't even think it's something that i've grasped when i do finally tell someone that i do youtube or something like that they find out my subscriber amount they will start to treat me differently yeah i don't feel like having a following has changed me if anything i feel like it has really opened me up to realize like i have a lot of people out here who care about me and the main thing is when i broke my leg so many freaking people reached out and it was overwhelming but in a good way everyone's like are you okay girl what happened like dominique what did you do so yeah i really love the community that we've built here and i'm not gonna just say me because you guys built this community as well it's a safe positive place and that's one thing that i'm really happy to have i'm happy to have a safe and a positive channel because i feel like you know there's some channels here on youtube that can be negative or you know degrade other women but but that's not the way that it is here. I feel like everyone here is so, ugh, I just love y'all so much. And I'm, I'm just so happy. I'm so fulfilled. So yeah, next question because y'all gonna make me cry. But we got the lashes on. And this is probably actually going to be my last question because I'm about to do my lips and then that is it. So the next topic that I got is becoming the woman that you want to be. Um, so like I said, this is probably going to be my last topic because I'm about to go ahead and, uh, do my lips and then that's it because I need to record a collective haul for you guys because today is filming Friday for me. Y'all like that little slogan I came up with? I came up with Fridays as my filming day. It's like a break from all of my schoolwork and today is just a day that I film videos, I edit, and then I get them up. So, um, yeah, so I gotta record a collective haul for you guys. But becoming the woman that you want to be, and I feel like this is a great topic because I am kind of in that 
transition phase with being 23 i feel like i've done enough but then i feel like i haven't done enough and then it feels like what the hell am i doing and then it's you know it's just like all of these feelings because i am in that like 20 somethings y'all know that quote 20 somethings like just what is going on right now that's literally sometimes like how i feel becoming the woman that you want to be I feel like in order to become the woman or the man or the person that you want to be, you have to obviously show up as that person. So for example, if you want to be a more positive person, you have to have more positive thoughts. If you want to be a more feminine person, I feel like you should definitely start to practice the woman that you want to be meaning you have to show up as that person so the way you dress the way you act if you want to be portrayed a certain way you definitely have to show up as that person and that goes as little as you know walking out the house with a bonnet on and i think this was like a huge thing i don't know if you guys saw this but it was like all over the internet um maybe last year or two years ago women were showing up to the airport with bonnets on and there was like this huge conversation about you know showing up as a person you want to be you know treated as or portrayed as so it goes as little as you know dressing as the person you want to be portrayed as if you want to be portrayed as um, a confident woman a woman that is respected then of course you have to show up as that person and of course it's not just you know your physical look but your mental another thing to consider is of course therapy um you know if you want to become a better person i feel like everyone needs therapy even myself um because i just feel like having someone to talk to who is not your friend who could be biased or you know who is not your mother who could be biased or a family member or a significant other oops do not get me wrong it's great to have someone to talk to that you know is a family member but i also feel like it's important to have someone who is a professional to talk to you about things that you may not know is affecting you know the person that you want to become or the person you are today you have to try and show up every single day as a person you want to be in order to become that person and it is okay not to feel great every single day i feel like that's something that social media today portrays a lot that you have to be on top of it you have to be okay every single day and that is so not true you guys like you are not a robot you are going to have a horrible day one day okay you are going to lose your keys you are going to lose your wallet and then you're going to lock yourself out the house and then you're going to get a flat tire you are going to have horrible days but it is okay and you have to go ahead and reset yourself so you guys my face is all done again make sure you go ahead and check my description box down below for all of the makeup products that i use um i'm about to go ahead and grab my top because y'all know my leg is broken so i'm not going nowhere and it's film friday so i'm gonna look cute from the neck up okay so i'll be right back all right you guys so i just went ahead and unwrapped my hair i just put this little clip in i hope my part is straight <laughs> but i went ahead and just put this little brown clip in and i put on this cute little like bohemian dress i got from zara um and i kind of like it with my hair pushed back because i don't know it's it's giving me like west indies but i'm just going ahead and putting some oil on my hair it's actually time for my hair to be washed and this is the oil that i'm putting on my hair i specifically like that oil whenever like i'm going out because it makes my hair shiny you guys know i swear by my moroccan oil but that's more so for like health and actually moisturizing my scalp and everything but when it comes to filming and going out this is something that i put on my hair right before i go not only does it make it like shiny and it makes it looks super healthy but it also smells really good so if anyone comes like past you and they somehow get a whiff of like your hair it kind of smells like a perfume to me it kind of smells like gucci in a sense um so i really like to put this like on my hair i like to put it as you guys can see like on my actual part because it just makes your hair look like super healthy and super you know moisturized and everything like that but like i said when it comes to like actually moisturizing my hair for um you know health and things like that i love my moroccan oil i swear by it but i got my hair pushed back i went ahead and oiled it i put my little dress on like i said this is from zara it's given like a little bohemian thing i got like big balloon arms super cute um and then i'm gonna go ahead and put on my jewelry from anna luisa again shout out to them for sponsoring today's video these earrings are so cute and so feminine and like i said i love these little pouches that they include 
include. These are great for whenever you travel with your jewelry. I partnered with Ana Luisa before and I still use the little pouches to carry my jewelry whenever I travel. So I absolutely love these. Next, I'm going to put on my little ring that they sent me. I love this ring because like I said earlier in the intro that you can definitely stack this ring. This ring is super easy to stack. And then I also got my little bracelet that I'm going to put on. Very, very cute. I love these pieces from Ana Luisa. So I just went ahead and grabbed my edge brush really quick. I like to use this whenever like I do like a bun type of thing because you know it has the little small brush on the end. That way you can be a little bit more precise when it comes to you know just tucking these hairs into place. And then I like to do like a little swoop here. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's one thing I love about when you put your hair in like a clip. It can be messy and it's approved. It's approved if it's messy because it's like, oh, she has her hair in a claw clip. It's actually really cute when you have like little flyaways in my opinion. So not too crazy when making it look perfect but you guys that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed once again thank you so much to anna luisa for sponsoring today's video make sure you guys go ahead and check my description box down below not only for anna luisa details but also for all of the products that i used in today's video i hope you guys enjoyed make sure you comment down below and i'll meet you guys there you guys know the drill until next time i love you guys so so much and i'll see you in the next one Adios.